Hey, good morning guys, Kevin here. Today, I'm in Whistler. Um, I was actually planning on heading up the mountain today, but there was tons of clouds and rain up on the Whistler Glacier. So I'm gonna stick around the valley today and work on some off-season training. So I've got this snowboard addiction training board set up. Gonna give you guys some tips on front and back board slides and lip slides. Also, I've been seeing a lot of requests on the channel for tips for editing snowboard videos. So I've got some editing tips for you guys. And then finally, I'm gonna show you guys my new snowboard for the summer season. Really looking forward to showing you guys that. So let's get started with some off-season training on the Snowboard Addiction training board. All right guys, so we're just gonna get warmed up on the training board, get some front and back board slides and lip slides, and I'll just go over with you guys some of the things that I try to do that help me get my board sideways, level, and balanced on the training board. The first thing I try to think about when doing the board slides is trying to land level on one foot or the other. And by landing nice and level, that just gives you that platform to first land on, get your balance, and get the trick. The second thing I'm thinking about is twisting my upper and lower body in the opposite direction. This takes a little bit of getting used to and wrapping your head around it. One thing I did at the start was I would think about reaching my back hand and back foot away from each other to really feel and get that twist. And it may come with a little bit of practice, but once you get comfortable twisting, then you can get your board completely sideways. And then the final thing for the board slides is visualizing. So I start to think about how my board's gonna land and what it's gonna look like and feel like and just try to visualize that ahead of time. So if I'm landing on my right foot, then I wanna see and visualize my left foot being all the way out to the side. Um, vice versa, if I land on my right, thinking about sticking my left foot out. The more that you visualize, the more that you practice, those tricks will just come like second nature once you're up on the mountain again. Finally guys, the difference between a front and backside board slide is that for a front side board slide, the feature is in front of you. For a backside board slide, the feature is behind you. And the difference between a board slide and a lip slide is that on a board slide, your board just goes straight onto the feature. And then for a lip slide, you gotta bring your board up and over the feature before landing on it for the trick. Highly debated terms, they come from skateboarding, but that's what they are. So there's also been a few questions on the channel about editing tips and tips for making videos in general. So I wanna give you guys my top five tips for editing. Um, I've been editing now for years and I've managed to get my time down from you know taking seven or eight hours to edit a video. Now I can do it under an hour and it just comes from these simple things. So the first tip is when you're filming, film with a purpose. So have a vision or a story in mind so that as you're filming, you're filming selectively, and then when you sit down at your computer to edit, you'll have an hour of footage compared to three or four hours, which can take you know days to edit. So if you can sit down with about an hour's worth of footage that you selectively filmed, then you can run through those clips and have a video made pretty quickly. The second tip is don't watch all your videos before editing them. That's a mistake I used to make. As soon as I would get home, I'd go through and I would watch all the clips and it would take me an hour or two just to watch everything I filmed. Now what I do is I just put everything straight into the editor. I don't watch it through at all. I just get right into editing. So by doing that, you can you know, start to cut out all the footage and all the things that you don't need. And you know after an hour or so, you've trimmed down an hour of footage down to about 15 or 20 minutes. 
and you're, you're that much closer to having a finished video compared to watching everything through and sort of wasting your time. The third tip is to just learn some of the basic editing tools. There's nothing too complex or fancy about editing. Once you have like three or four of the basic tools down, that's pretty much all you need and you'll use those tools 90% of the time. Um, you may pick up a few extra tools and tricks along the way, but when you're just starting out, you just need three or four of the basics. You get those down, you get comfortable, and that's all you need. Um, for myself, I, I use the basic tools 90% of the time, and then every once in a while, I'll try to learn something new or I'll look up a tutorial on the internet about uh, an editing trick and then add that in. But most of the time, I'm just using three or four of the basics. The fourth tip, guys, is to find the balance between camera quality and the performance of your computer. Because with a lot of computers, they can't handle really high quality video. For example, my computer is a $2,000 gaming computer and it can't really handle 4K video. So I shoot everything in 1080 and that's just so that my computer can handle it and I can run through clips and without a lot of lag. So check out your computer, you know, try filming in different qualities, try 720, 1080, 4K, see what your computer can handle. And I think that, you know, the quality doesn't matter so much between 720 and 4K. Some of the worst videos I've seen have been in 4K and some of the best have been in 720. So I think the content of the video matters more than the quality. So keep that in mind, the quality of the camera compared to the performance of your computer. The final tip is to get feedback on your editing. And the best way to do that is to produce some content, put it out there for the world or for your friends to see, and then get some constructive criticism. I remember one of the first pieces of advice that I got, um, my friend watched my video and he told me, Kevin, next time you make a video, drink a pot of coffee before you get in front of the camera. And that was because my energy was really low. So I haven't started drinking pots of coffee, but that was some criticism and some feedback that helped me learn, helped me grow. And it's just something that I keep in mind. So when you're making videos, it's great to get feedback, to see what people like, what people don't like, and then you can make adjustments from there. And putting out just more and more content too is just great practice. And then I think that's the most crucial thing is to be producing content, getting feedback, learning, and then going from there. Okay guys, so I hope those tips help you guys out with editing. Um, right now, while we're down here, I wanna show you guys my new snowboard. So I picked up the 2018 Capita Horoscope. So the Capita Horoscope, it's a park board. It's got zero camber under your feet, so it's totally flat. And then it's got a bit of rocker on the nose and tail for pressing. It's a four to 10 on flex, so it's pretty soft but I think it's just gonna be an all around fun park board. And for these upcoming summer months and the upcoming trips, I'm gonna be doing a lot of park riding. So I wanted to pick up a board that I can test out for you guys, give you guys some feedback. And yeah, this is one of Capita's most popular boards. So really looking forward to uh, testing it out in the park. Check this out guys, so Jill picked up this veggie meat pie from the Whistler Farmer's Market. Oh, can't get a piece. <laughs> Jill, where'd you find those pies? At the Whistler Farmer's Market at a company called Hip Pies. They had vegan pies. Um, I picked up two savory ones. One was a breakfast pie and the other was an Aussie meat pie, but they're both vegan and they're amazing. Yum, it's delicious. Yeah, super good. So finally, I wanna show you guys my massage ball. So I use a massage ball pretty much every day. This thing is amazing for relieving muscle pain. So after snowboarding or after training or anything, come home at night, get onto the massage ball, and it's like a lifesaver for relieving muscle pain. So I spend about 20 minutes on this thing, gets into any tight, sore spots, and yeah, it just helps relieve pain. If you're somebody that's active all the time, training, snowboarding, definitely get one of these guys.
So the plan for this week, guys, is to go up and snowboard on the Whistler Glacier. Then, next weekend, I'm heading down for High Cascade Session 1 down in Oregon at Mount Hood. Hopefully see some of you guys there. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Make sure you give this video a like. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.